Hi there guys, good to see you and welcome to number four, I think it is, uh, in our Lent series of Holy Shedlets. Now one of the things I've heard people say over and over during this past year goes something like, one of the good things about this pandemic is, or the silver lining in all of this is. And it's true, isn't it? I mean, despite the devastating impact of the pandemic on so many lives, there have been pluses this past year, things uh, personally and collectively that we'd probably like to carry forward with us into the future. And this tendency to be constructive, to be hopeful, to see silver linings or hidden meanings buried in adverse circumstances is nothing new. It's a human instinct. It's a survival instinct, really, because we need to make sense of our surroundings, to make sense of our world, of even the most horrible circumstances, to find a positive that can strengthen us and help us as we go forward on our journey. Mind you, it's pretty clear that we all approach this a bit differently, partly down to where our personalities fall on what's technically called the tigger eeyore scale. You know, are we more like Tigger in Winnie the Pooh, bouncing with energy and optimism, or Eeyore, more downbeat and focused on the snags? Now, look, there's no right or wrong in that, just different. We need both of these things. But I wonder where you tend to fit in with all of that. Which way do you mostly lean in life? Well, here's the thing. Whatever our personality, wherever we fit on the Tigger Eeyore spectrum, and I reckon that can vary from day to day for all of us. The thing that really counts is how we choose to live our lives, regardless of mood or temperament or circumstance. What choices do we make? How do they impact other people? How do they shape who we are as individuals? I think what really, really matters is whether we tend to withdraw and contract in the face of adversity, you know, pull back into a safe place of disengagement, or alternatively, whether we reach out and embrace life for all it's worth, the challenging bits as well as the um, plain sailing parts. Well, it is Lent, and as you know, I'm focusing quite a lot on poems through this period. So here's a really short poem that I think helps, that sheds a little bit of light on all this. It's by the wonderful American poet William Stafford, and uh, it's simply called Yes, and it goes like this. It could happen any time. Tornado, earthquake, Armageddon. It could happen. Or sunshine, love, salvation. It could, you know. That's why we wake and look out. No guarantees in this life. But some bonuses. Like morning. Like right now. Like noon. Like evening. You know, I love the economy of that little poem. Nine short lives, uh, lines rather. Nothing ambiguous or intellectually arduous. It's all straightforward or accessible, even to those of us who are a bit scared of poems. I was for quite a long time. Um, but it's deceptively penetrating and challenging. It's about how we look at life, or rather how we receive life because none of us can ultimately determine what happens to us. You know, the circumstances, tornado, earthquake, Armageddon, sunshine, love, salvation, a pandemic. All of that is beyond our remit. But it's important, the poem seems to say, not to carve life up, reveling in the good bits, and then shutting our eyes and just numbing out to the chunks of life that we don't like as if they're not really part of us because you know what they are they are part of us every bit of our life is our life and, and it's there to be lived each moment and experienced uh, not simply are endured remember that lovely line from uh, Leonard Cohen there is a crack in everything that's how the light gets in this world is not perfect. You and I are not perfect. If you expect perfection of yourself, you will spend your life being disappointed. But you know what? That's fine. It's through the cracks that the light gets in. The poem says no guarantees in this life. No guarantees. All kinds of things can and possibly will happen. That's why we wake and look out. But some bonuses. 
like morning, like right now, like noon, like evening. Do you remember that bit where Jesus said, stop worrying about tomorrow. Today's trouble is enough for today. I like that, don't you? A lot of wisdom there. A lot of wisdom that my wife would, uh, would go for. She often tells me, get a good night's sleep, Dave. It'll, it'll all look different tomorrow. If I'm honest, she's not listening, is she? Uh, if I'm honest, that can sometimes annoy me because, you know, when I'm feeling all chewed up about something or anxious, I sometimes have this contrary sense that it's mine to hold on to. I mean, bonkers, I know, but I also know that I'm not alone. Uh, we can all tend to cling at times to our worries and anxieties like some kind of weird comfort blanket. But while we're focusing all that attention on worrying about stuff, that we can't change anyway, um, we automatically stop living fully in the present moment. We're suddenly then sleepwalking through our own life. But Pat's right, or was it Jesus? Can't tell the difference these days. <laughs> a combination. Stop worrying about tomorrow, get a good night's sleep, and then at least you'll be better equipped to face whatever tomorrow brings. I've shared before in the Holy Shed that wonderful night prayer from the New Zealand Anglican Prayer Book, which says, Lord, it is night after a long day. Lord, it is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. How good is that? I mean, even finishes with a touch of the Beatles too. <laughs> in a way, you know, the poem that we've just read is a celebration of the gift of life's daily rhythms. Morning, noon, evening, right now. And, you know, that's so resonant because biologically life is all about rhythm, the cycles of existence. It's written into our very being, into our physical being. It's written into the whole of nature. Our entire life is wrapped up in rhythm. Breathing, of course, is the most basic uh, rhythm. If you don't breathe, you're dead, right? But the amazing thing is that we don't have to do it. We're, you know, we, we, it's not a conscious action. Our body does it for us. It's one of life's graces on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. But there is, I think, a huge benefit to paying attention to it, to noticing the breath. Um, I mean, you try it just now. You know, follow the breath in through your nostrils, down into your belly, the turn, and then let go out again. Focusing on your breath, I've discovered, is the cheapest, most basic, and probably most powerful therapy that you'll ever find. But there's a rhythm also to the day isn't there to to the pattern of our life i mean what a bonus going to bed waking up having breakfast living each moment dealing with life on a momentary basis doing what you can processing what is there before you not what isn't there not worrying about what you didn't do before and not worrying about what's coming tomorrow each moment's trouble or joy is enough now, as you will know, some of you, I'm a massive fan of the serenity prayer, not simply as a prayer, but actually as a spiritual practice, as a way of being in the world. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, strength to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. After decades of pastoral counselling, I have realised that most of life's problems stem from muddling the two things in this in this prayer of, of confusing the elements in this prayer in other words from we suffer from trying to change things that we can't change whilst at the same time failing to change things that actually we can do something about I mean you ever think about that I think it's a pretty profound insight really and offers a potential end to a lot of our suffering. It's more than a prayer. It's a spiritual practice, a way of life. Living through the things that we can't change. 
and changing the things that we can, that we want to, that we really ought to. Jesus said that he came so that we would have life, abundant life. In other words, to live fully, to be all that we can be. And that's only possible if we say yes to life, not once, not twice, but constantly. If it's a way of life to us saying yes to whatever comes, to what we may see at times as being the good, the bad and the indifferent, uh, but actually it's just life. It's, it's, it's all that we have. So there you go. Breathing, finding our inner stillness and practicing the serenity prayer. There is my Lent prescription for a more peaceful, less stressful, fully lived existence through this pandemic and beyond. It's just called saying yes to life. And it works. Trust me. I'm a vicar at large. See you soon.